lifetime. But I want to tell you, we're coming to a place we're going to need it quite frequently. I believe the economies of the world are going in such a mess that the Lord's going to say, Dad, go uptown, there's a coin in the mouth of the fish. I got a fish pond, maybe there's a bunch of them, you know. I'm serious. Those boys didn't have any money. And the Romans didn't like them. Remember? And, and you know, Lord, they just raised our taxes. See, I heard about it. That's what it was for. Pay them taxes. What are we going to do? He says, Peter, go on down there, and the first fish you catch, it'll be a gold mm -hmm. coin in his mouth. Can't you imagine the burden that hit old Peter? Oh, I better not drop him. <laughs> that fish is so, oh, goodness. And the fish, is, he's, and he's down there over there. He said, oh, the pressure's building. Lord, i got to get the first one. We'll have that tax money, and the man coming to get me. <laughs> and old big-handed Peter, he gets the, I got it. And Lord, hold up. Wow! <laughs> I was preaching up in Indiana about two and a half years, three years ago, whatever it was. Where's David? David, remember the guy that the Lord spoke to us and told us to drive by and go see if he's going to bless us? See, the offers have been a little bit small because up there where we were preaching, they have hunger feed day for the hungry and all that. And, but bless the Lord, the Lord took us by and the brother blessed us. He's told us to drop by and say hello. Well, listen, I was preaching at this brother's fellowship in a hotel about this size. And at the end of the service, he says, somebody's got something for you. And he put in my hand a gold coin. I didn't know that gold coin was worth $60 million. Now, imagine what that gold coin in that fish's mouth was worth. Back in them days. Good gracious a lot. Hello, Jesus. <laughs> this is the kind of miracles we're going to begin to walk in. Hey, listen to me. I heard today that in 12 months, one of the worst food shortage in this hemisphere, all the way to Canada, is going to be right down our front door. The drought as well as the, they won't accept our money in many countries that we are ex, ex, bringing stuff in. And you're not interested enough to find out what your purpose is? I believe if I'm walking in his purpose, the stuff's going to show up on the front door. I believe it's going to be there. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. What am I trying to say? We are trying in our own efforts to do everything when his purpose and his plan for us will take you through the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. But how is it that we've gotten away from believing that? I believe that what's going on in the world right now is the very thing that it needs to be in order to get us back to the place that we ought to be in order to be prepared to meet Him in the clouds because I believe the church has got to have something to wake them up. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 I really believe that. I believe that the religious spirits were so strong after Jesus left that earth because them men all over the earth had been reigned up in that Judaism and they had been in all that mess and that junk. And he left them and he said, hey boy, this is going to get rough. And buddy, it got rough. Rome started burning up anything and everything where they taught the Bible. They kept running. And they kept going. And they kept going. And they kept, you think that didn't keep them awake? If you don't believe it, you look down the road. Every disciple that was called of God, that found God's purpose and never quit, they were preaching the gospel down the road where Jerusalem was burning. And the Bible says that Jerusalem, one million people died in 24 hours. And they didn't use a nuclear weapon. But down the road, those disciples, they were carrying the gospel and they were alive and well. Their purpose wasn't finished. Hey, your purpose is not finished. Amen. Let's all say, my purpose is not finished. My purpose is not finished. Let me tell you something. I got some age on me. And when I get up in the morning, I'm not too sparky. 
<laughs> but I'm fine to get there. I'm going to go in that kitchen. And I'm going to take that tennis ball. I'm going to pull it in that left hand. It's trying to get arthritic on me. I broke this thing twice. And it's got a little arthritis in it. And I rebuke that arthritis. And I make that pot of coffee. And I pull on that tennis ball. As soon as that coffee comes out, I drink me a great big old cup of it. Just straight. <laughs> And when he gets down in there in about 20 minutes. <laughs> and then I get my second cup and I put a little honey in it and I top it with some half and half and I stir it up and I go get my Bible. Well, after I get through praying and talking to the Lord and me and him making sure I'm still running for purpose and I'm still reaching for the plan and I'm still wondering what, whereabouts he going to take me next and I want to know because I, I'm in you, Lord, and you in me and I know you got a government and I'm not going to miss you by looking at a bunch of junk. <laughs> so you can run hard after the Lord. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to read that verse again to you. Proverbs 19, verse 21. Many places, plans are in a man's or woman's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. Friend, I don't believe God is obligated to do a thing for me if he hadn't counseled with me about it. I really don't. I really don't. I do not believe that unless he's counseled with me about it, he's obligated to do one thing. But he always does exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ever ask or oh, think. Lord. But you see, that part of being humble before him is part of what, what it cost you to get in there. None of us want to stay humble. That part of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's why we got to get along with Him. That's why we got to spend time with Him. That's why we got to do whatever it takes to get us off the ground. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Man, this, I mean, you know, <laughs> the Lord told us, He said, My yoke is easy, my burden is light. But there is a yoke and there is a burden. Oh, yeah. But most folks just want to throw the whole thing off. I want nothing. I'm serious. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And we have to get real. God, you just get, I'll tell you what. You live a repentant life and you say, yeah, Lord, I, I understand and I thank you, God, for bringing repentance to my heart about this. I just thank you, God. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. I confess what I did is slowful. I confess what I did is just full of old carnal stuff. I, I, it's just, Lord, I confess that I must Set my chin like a flint and seek you with my whole heart and quit this lollygogging and boondocking around like I'm doing something and acting religious and making everybody think I'm on the ball. You see, God, God, He's all powerful. He's got it all together. And you and I have, have just sort of allowed ourselves. To be sucked into about anything and everything that feels good, looks good, might be good, is all right. I, I, I want to know it's right, bless you. Amen. 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 The unfallible, uncompromising word of God. Can y'all say amen? amen? Amen. Friend, let me tell you something. It was hard for me to fall in love with Jesus unconditionally every day. I'd read that Bible and say, God, that's too hard. And I didn't realize I didn't have a relationship with him. Uh -huh. Are y'all hearing me? Uh -huh. And once I got that relationship with him, I realized it flowed. It see, it flowed. flowed, flowed, see. flowed. See, see. And his mercies are new every morning. Everybody say his mercies are new every morning. His mercies are That's what I'm talking about every morning. Oh, friend, let me tell you something. Mm. I love you, and I thank God.